My next guest is a passionate Bible teacher who desires to teach women how to study scripture so they are equipped to journey in a relationship with God for a lifetime. The author of this new Bible series, Focus 15, welcome Katie Orr. Thank you for having me. I've, uh, I've been going through, I was telling you, and uh, I've been praying to God, asking him for a word for 2017, and it was peace, and then I got this. And so I've been delving into it, and thank you. Thank you for putting the time in, in doing this. I want to hear your story. I want to hear how, you know, how do you transition to wanting to be a Bible teacher? Because I read here that you have a Bachelor of Science in <laughs> Medical Technology. Yes. So how does that happen? How do you have a degree in this but end up being a Bible teacher? Well, it's really a calling of God is what I'm learning as I, as I go through this. But I certainly had no aspirations of becoming an author and um, more of a science nerd than anything. But uh, I kind of grew up in church and Christian school and I knew a lot of the do's and don'ts of Christianity. Mm. And I try, I'm kind of your firstborn type A. So yeah. I tried that for a very long time. I was pretty good at it. Uh, and then, you know, that started, that desire to keep up with the do's and don'ts kind of waned away as mm. I got older. And I just felt like, I'm just tired of this. Is this really what Christianity is all about? Mm. And then, I brought, God brought me from Southern California to Auburn University and I found myself in the middle of a, a bunch of Christians in my dorm and it, they, they seemed to talk about Jesus like they had a relationship with him, like they just had coffee with him earlier that day. And I was like, I don't, I don't know Jesus that way. And so it was the first time where I started thinking, maybe this isn't, maybe Christianity isn't what I think it is. Mm. And uh, through the ministry of Campus Crusade for Christ, I learned a lot of the hows and the whys of Christianity. Mm. And that was really just a transformational thing for me. I do believe I was saved. I had a relationship with God, but I didn't have access to, to, to understand the Bible, especially. And when I started learning tools on how to go to the God's word for myself, it really opened up uh, just a, a whole new experience in my intimacy with God. And I think you you nailed something, Katie, because I think um, when I say the world kind of sees Christianity as do's and don'ts. Mm -hmm. They see our faith as like, okay, you're supposed to do this and you're not supposed mm -hmm. to do that. And I have that conversation, you probably do too, with a lot of people who are not Christians that are trying to figure out what this relationship means. So when you were going through that time and finding out the hows and the whys, what what kind of got you thinking, okay, I want to have this relationship? Well, deep down, I, I had that desire for years, yeah. but I was so frustrated. You know, I became a Christian in uh, junior high, and I vividly remember that moment in my room. I wasn't at youth group. I wasn't anything. I could have, I thought I was a Christian just because I grew up around the things of God and just because I could do my Bible drills and, and I could tell you where all the books of the Bible were or yeah. whatever, because that's what I thought it was about, knowledge. Mm. But then as I started to, to, wanting more, just kind of being disillusioned with those do's and don'ts. And so um, just, it's really just something you can't give to anybody. It's something you have to experience. And yeah. I think non-believers and believers alike can see that in people that there's just this un untangible something about them. And what it is, is the spirit in us. Mm. It's, it's the presence of Christ and people can see that. And it's not anything we can do of ourselves. It's, it's a gift of God. Yeah. Uh, but so many times I think we push it down because we're trying to clean ourselves up yeah. and we're trying to show that we are good when really it's not about our goodness. It's about the goodness that Jesus has given for us. When you started to delve into the Bible and study it more, mm -hmm. uh, how did you see that change? How did you see uh, that relationship get deeper as you got to understand God better in the Bible? Yeah, well, there was that uh, desire within me that I said, I just felt unfulfilled with that. And mm -hmm. I think the more, and to, to this day, I still struggle with that. It's not like a one-time thing. Mm -hmm. It's just a continual, the Bible calls it abiding in Christ or walking in the mm -hmm. spirit. Um, it's just a continual uh, asking him to fill our are fill fill us with mm. him with his presence and his word is the primary way that we know God and so I had that desire to know God better I just didn't know how to figure that out and once I got into the word and started studying it was like my eyes were open mm. to how good God is and what he's done for me and that I don't need to clean myself up to come to him I go to him and then he d is doing a good work in me and so you come up with Focused 15. Yes. And explain what focused 15 means. So F is for foundation. Yes. Yeah. So it's an acronym. It's yep. foundation, observation, clarification, utilization, and summation. And really what it is is peeling back different layers because as I mentioned, I learned all of those great Bible study 
methods and I ate it up and I mm. felt like I had a bazillion tools in my tool belt to study the Bible, but I also had a lot of time mm. and I wasn't married <laughs> and I was a college student and I had more time than I ever probably will have the rest of my life. And so when I made that transition to working full time and having kids and doing all of that, it was like, I don't have time to be in the Bible the way I want to. I have all these tools, but I don't have time to use them. And through the ministry of Crusade, I was on staff with Crusade. I discipled a lot of women. And that was my favorite thing to do was to mm. teach them how to study the Bible. So over really a decade of ministry, it's honed, that Focus 15 method is honing in the things that I have felt give me the most, most bang for my buck mm. in the Bible and imparting that to others in a way that we can remember that. And so foundation is just, we're, we're just looking at like, kind of a bird's eye view. We're gonna read it, we're gonna write it. Mm -hmm. um, and in, in the book, I give you lots of different ways to, to think about how to do that. Observation is learning how to ask good questions. That's mm -hmm. what good Bible study is all about, learning to ask good questions. And the best one probably is what is true about God. Yeah. Um, so depending on the study though, you know, we'll add in some extra questions there to help us look at what, what's there and train our eye to see what is on the page instead of what we want to see. Mm, um, and then good. clarification, we look actually at the original Greek or Hebrew, which sounds really scary, but it's really <laughs> not in this day and age. We have so many apps that we can use that yeah. are free. It's almost as easy as looking up a word in the dictionary. Mm. Um, then utilization is following the, the cross references and seeing the different threads throughout scriptures that can help us understand this passage better. And then summation is figuring out, okay, what does all this mean? And what does that have to do with my life today? Mm. And you do this all in 15 minutes. Yeah, well, it's over a week's time. <laughs> yes. So we do it in different days. Each part we do a different day. Yeah. I think that we tend to want to get through scripture quickly because we feel that I got to get enough, I got to get so much of it. Yeah. So, but really it's about, it's about quality instead of quantity. So we, we camp out in a passage for a whole week instead of trying to, okay, I did that and I'm going to move on. And I mean, I could speak, you could speak as a mom, right? Mm -hmm. Even 15 minutes is sometimes yeah. difficult to carve out. <laughs> but I've been going through peace and yeah, it is, it is kind of bite-sized, right? Mm -hmm. So you're able to delve into uh, a topic and really go into it. I want to know why you chose peace, faith, what is there, love and hope. Why did you choose those as being the focus of these four um, books? Well, I think hope is actually one of my favorites and it's really a study of the gospel. It's a little bit different than the rest of them. And mm -hmm. so it was really looking at when things are hard. You know, I lost a brother unexpectedly a couple of years ago. You know, when things happen, it's hard. You know, your experiences and your emotions don't always feel hopeful, but yet the Bible tells us that we have hope. Mm -hmm. And so each study is really my own wrestling with okay, this is what the Bible says to be true. This is how I feel. So yeah. how do I put these together? Yeah. And hope is really, it is, it's a study of the gospel. It's a study of how we can have hope no matter what, mm. no matter what our circumstances say. And it's really about who God is and trusting and believing that God is good regardless of my circumstances. Yeah in peace and I hone in on this again because yeah. it is really what's speaking in my life um, Philippians 4 mm -hmm. verse 6 and 8 are key yes. and and in this book and I would encourage you at home to look up that scripture and just uh, just allow just even repeat I've actually put it in my car just mm -hmm. as a reminder because it talks about anxiety and that is something mm -hmm. I think Katie that we hear a lot we have yeah. so many guests who come on and talk about just this anxiety that we battle with and I love what you said um, you said anxiety is a result of leaving God out of the loop. Mm -hmm. Talk about that. Yeah. So in that study, we're talking about the, the feedback loop that, yeah. you know, just if we had our mics and I don't understand how it all works, yeah. but you know, we've, we've all heard that negative feedback loop where it, it, uh, it kind of like a whistle. Yeah. It amplifies. Yeah. And we do the same in our own lives mm. that something happens that hurts our feelings or somebody says something that we don't like or a situation we start to begin to feel out of control. And at least in my mind, I just, I just, I let my run, my mind run wild mm. instead of checking it with the truth of who God is. Mm. And so I think that that's when we give into anxiety and you know, I feel like we need to do an asterisk. I know that, you know, I've struggled with depression. I've been on medication for that. I know there's physical things sometimes that go mm -hmm. on, but we tend to want to fight it first with physical things instead of spiritual things. Mm. And it's really allowing the peace of Christ to rule our hearts and our minds instead of what I think others are thinking about yeah. me or instead of what I think I should be or instead of what if, oh no, where's the money gonna come from? I let those things rule my 
thought life mm -hmm. instead of what God says that he is in control, that he loves me, that he is my provider. And so that's how we fight anxiety mm. in a spiritual realm is telling ourselves what to believe and instead of letting ourselves yes. just believe whatever. And I think that's the key, telling ourselves, because it's actually an active thing to do, mm -hmm. right? Because I mean, our mind is going to go places that we're, yeah. not, we're not happy yeah. with, but actively reminding ourselves of who we are in Christ mm -hmm. and who he has promised us to be and all of those things, that is an active trait that you have to do yeah. every single day. Before yeah. we run out, I, love was another great one that I mm -hmm. loved. And, uh, <laughs> and I love your candidness in this because you say, mm -hmm. and I think all of us can say, love is very hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is. We are commanded to love. Yeah. Sometimes we make it a choice, but we are commanded. And I think that's a great reminder mm -hmm. as you go through 1 Corinthians that thir uh, 13 mm -hmm. about the command to love. Yeah. yeah. And really, I think the most uh, helpful analogy for me with love and obedience and lots of different things is, is we think about the moon. Like growing up, I thought the moon had the light switch and somebody mm. switched it on and switched it yeah, off when I was yeah. a little. And then I realized that the moon doesn't have any power in its own, no light in its own. Mm. The light from the moon comes from the sun. Mm. It's a satellite. And we are to be the same. We are just satellites. We're moons for the glory of God to shine on us. It's not for me to go try to figure out how to be more loving and just conjure it up out of myself. Mm. I need to get the stuff out of my life that is keeping God's glory from reflecting off of me. We definitely have choices to make. It's still choices that we make. I'm choosing to love this person, even though I don't like them very much right now. But God, you can help me do this. And I think it's such a shift when we realize it's God's work in us, not a work I have to come out of myself. That's good. Katie, if people want to get uh, this Bible study, where could they find it? Yeah, focused15.com. Okay. Um, there's links to all the different, it's pretty much, you know, your normal bookseller stuff. Um, but yeah, focused15.com. So you can get a little bit about, a little bit more information about each of those and where to buy them. Thank so. you so much. Thanks for having me.